Welcome, everyone. My name is Lanissa James, and I'm one of the educational consultants with HSLTA. And I'm very excited today because joining me is the beautiful Nicole Doyle. She is um, not only is she from DeKalb, Georgia, but she also is an HSLDA ambassador, and she's the co-founder of the Georgia Black Home Educators Network. We're very excited to have you, Nicole. And while we're getting ready to start, I would love to know where you are from. So if you're watching us today, please go ahead and post. Tell us where you're from, how long you've been homeschooling. We are thrilled about this topic, Nicole. I hope you're as excited about this topic as I am. Are you excited today? Yes, yes, it is. It's been a wonderful experience homeschooling, and this is a pivotal part of my homeschooling experience here. Awesome. Well, the topic today is nurturing your child's passion with clubs and extracurricular activities in homeschooling. Clubs and extracurricular activity, one of my favorite topics. And so I'm very excited. I understand that you are a wife, you're a mother and you're a homeschool leader, we would love to know a little bit about you. So please share, tell us a little bit about who Nicole Doyle is. Well, um, my name is Nicole Doyle. I am from Stonecrest, Georgia, which is not too far from Stone Mountain, outside the Atlanta metro area. I am the wife of Willie and we've been married, we've been married 22 years, February the 1st of this year will be year number 22. Um, we are the parents of Four great kids, ages 21, 19, 15, and 12. Um, I, I graduated two homeschoolers, a 21-year-old who now attends Kansas State, a 19-year-old who is at Morehouse College, and we are very proud of them. Um, I currently am the um, president of DeKalb Christian Home Educators located in Stone Mountain, Georgia. Um, it is a homeschool co-op with a long history. It was actually started in 1989. I am president, I think, number seven or eight, so, you know, but this homeschool co-op has been here in this community a very long time. Um, I am excited to, to be a homeschool advocate and to be a part of HSLDA because homeschooling freedoms are very important and this is just an amazing opportunity. Oh, yes, it is. I'm a homeschool mom of seven and Nicole, I have two in college too. So we're on the two in college uh, boat together. That's exciting. So you have two more that you're homeschooling, right? That's exciting. Yes, so, yes. So let me ask you something. Tell me, how did your homeschool join, journey begin? Why did you decide homeschooling? Did you just, were you well, homeschooling the whole time or did you start midway? Tell us about your homeschool journey. So my homeschooling journey started with um, in 19, really like I'm sorry, not 19, I mean 2014. And so um, I was spending a lot of time volunteering at my child's um, um, middle school and the elementary school. And one of the teachers actually noticed how much time I was spending because I was also the volunteer librarian. He said, hey, you ever thought about homeschooling? It was a, a, a public school teacher and she, because she was considering homeschooling. So I think she was trying to together allies to, to homeschool. But at that moment, I kind of jumped into homeschooling with the Point of view. I didn't understand it. So I started with research. I looked at Susan Wise um, Briar book, um, The Well-Trained Mind. And then I went to Morning My Morning um, um, by Paula Penn Norbert. And as I researched, I just was absolutely convinced. But the main reason I did go into homeschool was because I wanted to have daily Bible study with my children. And I found myself running on a school schedule that wasn't conducive to that. And, eat, and with that being the foundational and most important part of our family. Awesome. So when you started homeschooling, your older two were in middle, in high school, and then you had two yes. younger? So, wow. Mm, I, okay. I had a seventh so grader at that nice. time. One, so seventh grade was your old, oldest student at the time. And that's exciting. That's very exciting. So you also mentioned that you're a homeschool leader. Tell me a little bit about the group that you lead and how did you get into homeschool leadership? So um, I, I met this amazing group um, um, several years ago and they at the time became Christian home educators. The, um, the president at the time, Michelle Shaw, she was doing these parents mentor once a month um, like meetups where they just say, bring all your questions. And I just they answered every question that I I had about homeschooling because they have such a long history. 
Um, they had so many parents there who had actually graduated students or some parents who were actually helping with their grandkids homeschooling. So I, at that time, um, Michelle and I, she asked me about to help with Bible quiz bowl. And um, we didn't have a location at that time for Bible quiz bowl. So we started practicing in our home um, with Bible quiz bowl, about 16, 17 teenagers. And from there, the board was like, I, I, we, we see you and we would love for you to come on as the president. And that was in 2017. That's exciting. Now we know we're talking about clubs and extracurricular activity, and we know what the five core classes are, English, math, science, history, foreign language, but we're talking about the extra, the not only are you doing the basics, but now you have a club or extra activity. Give me an idea of some of the clubs and activities you do with your children. Before we talk about the cab, tell me what you do with the Doyle family. So the Doyle family, number one, Bible quizzing. <laughs> that is the activity that all children participate in um, from elementary. When you, if you can read <laughs> to the to being in high school, we do Bible quizzing, and so we do Bible quizzing through the World Bible Quizzing Association, and basically they take one chapter at a time and the children study it and they um jump in with buzzers kind of like almost like jeopardy to answer a variety of questions there are um situational questions there are content questions there um just a variety of understanding and so it's to help children get um acclimated and comfortable with the word at a young age um, so they can just inject, really develop a relation, a personal relationship with Jesus for themselves. So that's my favorite yeah. activity. Nice. Any others? Um, my second favorite activity actually has been um, robotics. So I am a FLL robotics coach um, from First Lego League. And so there's a whole first organization, robotics and STEM, because I also um, am um, a, was a mentor for Science Olympiad. And so I just really like those um, clubs because it kind of, Science Olympiad played into my child, one of my children's niche interests, which was ornithology. He loved birds. And there was actually a category on naming birds by identifying them by the nest, the, the, the shell, the, um, their environment, even the sound. So it was one of those opportunities to really hone into the fact that he loved nature and give him a competition and a team setting to develop, to, to work and develop it. So this was, was this the robotics club you said? Well, that so, was Science Olympiad. So I love science STEM, Olympiad. we had robotics okay. and then we had Science Olympiad. That was a, a, a beautiful yeah. experience there too. I love it. So there are different types of clubs and being a high school educational consultant, I'd love to help high school students know that so many of the extracurricular activities could maybe go on the transcript if it becomes a passion like that robotics. Uh, did your student maybe expand upon robotics? What uh, degree program? Are they in engineering? Uh, how did these clubs turn into more as they grew in their homeschooling? So um, all through all four of my children participated in robotics um, in some form. And so my oldest son, um, robotics was he was the first love. He one of the first love robotics. And he is now um, in the computer science department at Kennesaw State University. He actually works um, for an organization that was um, the algebra project um, tutoring children in math and science. So this is since his senior year. And so we are prayerfully approaching the end of this particular undergrad endeavor. And so it can turn into something. And I know also here in um, where we are it, or anywhere, you can basically look at the department. If you decide to turn it into a transcript item, take a moment to see what um, can match up course wise. And I will say really consult with an educational consultant like Lanissa to find out how you want to tailor that course for your transcript. Yes, because just like going in computer science, you kind of want to see evidence of it, right? You want to see those coding yeah. classes, those Java, C script, and C++. Okay, but we're talking about passion. So some kids, teens, may not be passionate about it. How did you get your kids excited about some of the clubs and activities? What does that look like? What if I'm a mom and say, you know, I just don't know what my child wants to do? What would you say? Well, 
It's well, first of all, start with prayer. Start off with praying that God will give you the wisdom to to really sit still and hear what your child's passions are. Because sometimes as parents, we have a preconceived notion um, or thought about what our child's giftings are. And it may be a talent that your child hasn't had the confidence to truly show you. So I will say with any um, endeavor with homeschooling, please start with prayer. Secondly, sit with your, your child and have a conversation or and pay attention to the things that they are interested in. If they, like my child, he was interested in ornithology. Every time a bird, he will be like, what's that sound? Did you see that bird? Did you, you know, PBS, loving, loving PBS nature shows, um, the national, you go into um, the national parks, the Georgia state parks. You have to spend time with God and with your child because they will tell you their passion. You just have to, some children are a little bit shyer about it. And so pick activities that as you're watching them, they love to draw, kind of go into finding art classes and things like that. Yes, I agree with you, Nicole. You really do have to lean in and pay attention to what they do and what they enjoy doing. And it may not be in those core subjects, right? So the bird watching, I have a bird watcher at home too. It's my Layla. She's my youngest one. And we love to study flying creatures. It may not be in a normal school day, right? It just may be something while you're on your way to the grocery store and you notice that a kid is always interested in something. So where do they go? How do you find these activities? You know, like I have one daughter who's in environmental science and, you know, you have to really hone in and figure out where can you get more of the thing that your child loves to do? What would you recommend? Well, I would recommend um, social media is a resource. Um, the Facebook groups that exist are amazing. Now, also in these Facebook groups, they can be outside of your area, but you will meet moms in these Facebook groups who will tell you how they started their own Club, remember you're a homeschool mom. I, I don't think I've met a homeschool mom yet who hasn't written a curriculum <laughs> so, at some point. So you can structure a club. Um, you can put out an invite um, to others who are like-minded families and make a decision. You can also reach out. I know here with us, we have the um, Dexter Mosley Act. And so there are some um, public school clubs and situations. I always say be aware and make sure your child that that's something that you're comfortable with. All, all yeah. clubs and organizations, you do need to take a time to really evaluate. Um, sure. But please yeah. be confident enough to say that you can develop it if you need to. So you, I love that. And you mentioned that you had about 16 kids doing Bible quiz bowl. So what did you do to get the 16 teens to your house? Or are you um Cooking lunch for them. Give me, give me a scenario. What does this look like with all the kids coming over for Bible quiz ball? So when you have parents, I always say not, it, the parents getting parents fueled up for activity is is one thing because Christian parents they love some Bible quiz ball. It's not that hard. But when the children would come over, I made a point to always bake something. And so at that mm. time, my youngest, um, she was five. Um, and she really wasn't old enough to understand the, to, to do Bible quizzing in the way that the older kids were, because these kids were um, elementary, middle and high school. And since then, our clubs um, have had times where there are over 60 plus children in these clubs um, for, for Bible quizzing straight across those ages. And we would bake something and her baking and being of service to the Bible Quiz Bowl Club, it was, she was so excited and to incorporate the younger siblings. So that was a part of it, making sure, because everybody was like, let's just be honest, a homeschooler would do anything for baked goods and a Chick-fil-A card. Um, <laughs> and so they were showing up excited to be in Bible quizzing. That's exciting, that's exciting. So now let's go to your program. At, in DeKalb, DeKalb Christian Home Educators, is that what it's called? Tell me yes. a little bit about your day. Is this a co-op? Uh, kids take several classes. So now not only are your kids busy in the Doyle household, but they have some place to go, right, to connect with other kids. Are they activities there, clubs, or are they more core classes that you do at your co-op? So we are, um, we do have some core 
class um, classes, but we mostly are a cooperative um, that's parent led. And so our parents, um, they sit and curate the classes according to their children's interests and sometimes just advocate for a certain instructor or for another parent who's more um, who has more expertise in that area to teach that class. And we just give them the freedom because we have a building um, at this moment. We're at the um, Stone Mountain United Methodist Church to, to for parents to come in and really curate their education expansion. We do have a lot of extracurricular clubs. So number one is, like I said, Bible quizzing is the only club on our schedule that has no competition. So you know how you stagger the schedule with block scheduling with other things maybe going on. We deliberately structure our day that right after lunch, Bible quizzing, every, everyone is participating or everyone is listening. And so we feel like that is our most important club. But we also do, we also have a, a orchestra. We do private lessons um, on strings, guitar, piano, Spanish. And then we have two classical education um, classes um, that are at three levels, um, pre-K, middle, and upper elementary. And they review of um, history, math, Latin, and um, and mathematics and science in there. I love it. You guys are having a great time in Georgia. This is exciting. So, so tell me about this collaboration. You have an event coming up and there's a collaboration going on because if I understand correctly, the ladies who are collaborating with you, you guys are getting together to do a statewide event called Flourish. And I want to hear about these other clubs that you're collaborating at with. Well, yes. So um, January the 25th through 27th here in um, Georgia, Clarkston, Georgia, we are having Flourish 2023, the Black Family Homeschool Conference. And so this conference is an opportunity to really capture the audience that was forced to pandemic school. And now they're in a space where they're really leaning into what are the possibilities when it comes to homeschooling my children? Um, I have um, three amazing women that I'm working with. I have Andrea Hall of Epic Homeschool Network. She's in North Georgia, Austell. I have um, Michelle Shaw, who is in um, Lilburn, Georgia, um, out um, that is Northeast Independent Preparatory Academy, it is an accrediting um, agency for transcripts here in Georgia. And then we have Malika Wells, who is of the ministry Coupled in Christ, a marriage ministry. And these ladies, um, they they are phenomenal um, in, in coming together to put together this conference. And we have so much support. Um, we are so grateful to HSLDA for their support and for so many of their educational consultants who will actually be on, um, on the agenda and yes. so in, in particular, yes. you we are, yes. and yeah, Dr. Rochelle Matthew Somerville, we are very excited. Yes. yes. And we even bring in Darren Jones, who's one of our attorneys. We're excited that Darren Jones, who works with our group services here, will also be in Georgia. It's just going to be a great family reunion. It's going to be exciting of all the people. You want to tell us a little bit about the keynote speakers you have coming? Yes, um, our keynote speakers, we have Dr. Cheryl Phil Smith, um, professor out of University of Georgia. She's actually done an, an amazing amount of research on um, Black families and homeschooling. And we are just excited to hear what she has to say on a combination of the direction, the research, and the support from an academic standpoint and statistical standpoint for um, Black families to really homeschool. Um, and be successful at and be successful at, at it. We also have um, Amber O'Neill Johnston. Um, she is a Charlotte Mason expert um, when it comes to in, in that curriculum. She calls it Charlotte Mason with an afro, but she is very. We're very excited to have her. She's an author and she's a blogger. Um, check her out, the Heritage Mom, and she really talks about spending the time to really curate literature that speaks to your family, your Christian ethics and foundation. Um, and that just supports the whole, as I keep saying, curated experience because you are the parent, you are in control. So you take a moment to really just develop a whole educational experience for your child that is rich. That's exciting. It's going to be a fun, fun time. You guys bring so much dynamics. I mean, like individually, 
you guys are doing amazing things individually in Georgia. And it's just so exciting that you've decided because you just all got together and said, you know what? Hey, um, Nicole, let it, you let it. And you obviously invited these two ladies to join you or three ladies to join you. That's very, very exciting. Give us some tips. I know so many people who are watching saying, man, I would love to do a, cl a club. I would love to do a Bible quiz bowl. I would love to have robotics at my kitchen table. What kind of tips can you give to help people collaborate, other homeschool moms to come together? You also mentioned that you have um, lots of volunteers. You're so good at this, Nicole. Give us some tips of how you bring people together. Well, I'll say first thing is recognize that most homeschool moms want to be supported and heard. They're standing in a place and they just want to be heard. It's so interesting how they'll come and just tell you all their all the problems. And as I'm listening to them, I'm like, you are more than equipped for this. You just laid out their confidence may not be at the point where you where they want it to be. And they're saying it with their speech. But as I'm listening to them, I'm like, what? so you're telling me that you have all this experience and they're thinking it doesn't translate into homeschooling. It doesn't translate to something that can be rich and their child can learn um, from them. You, your child is spinning, is at your, at your knee and your attention in the midst of a school day is pretty much what all they want. <laughs> just your attention. And so I encourage people, if you want to build a volunteer force, number one, you have to sit and listen and actually hear people's um, needs. That's number one. Number two, give them the space to actually put the situation together, meaning say, hey, do you need resources? As a homeschool leader, I have gone out and gotten grants to help other moms in my homeschool co-op you know, put together a class or to have money for the, the trips. So I would say, listen and then be ready to offer um, a resource for them. I love that. So Nicole, people are watching and they're thinking, man, I really want to do some extracurricular activity. I want to do some clubs with my children, whether they're elementary school, their middle school or their high school ages. Give us tips because you've worked with this on all different ages, right? You've done clubs. Did I hear you say elementary level, middle school level yeah. and high school level? How does it differ? You know, young kids, is, they're always happy to come together. But give us a little scenario of how pulling kids together for clubs and activities works different for each age group. So, um, you know, with the younger kids, you know, it, a, a sweet word, uh, a um a moment of saying, you're doing a good job. I see what you're doing. Um, calling a child's name out. It's, it's definitely, that's all they need. Sometimes at the end of a hard Bible quiz bowl practice and the child didn't get all the verses because our memory verses are have to be exact. And so they may have skipped over the word the to, to issue grace and say, you did a wonderful job. Treats. I don't care what anyone says. A, a kids with treats. Please be aware and also that. understand, you know, be be kind to parents. Please don't offer like a ton of sugar at times, but be kind to parents. But I will say, I, I kind of get your questions probably these high schoolers. These, yes. these very fickle, um, I, I don't want to do it, <laughs> high schoolers. Yeah. Um, I have actually gone to my local Chick-fil-A and, and asked them, hey, can I just get a couple of those Chick-fil-A cars that are just for one free sandwich? You'll be surprised. Chick-fil-A proprietors really do support. Um, they, they don't mind doing it. Any restaurant, pick a local restaurant and say, hey, this is what I'm trying to do. And can I just get something where a child can come and maybe get a free donuts or a free um, ice cream? Reach out to your community. Talk to the home, your high schoolers, because they may not be comfortable with it. And it's just really a facade because they just don't have confidence in it and also give them the resources to set in their hand. Uh, if you have a club, emailing just the parent is not gonna do. Emailing the parent and the child, put them in the communication loop is also very, very important. Nice. 
And we don't have to have a whole, whole lot of people. I know with homeschoolers, all of us have so many children, right? So if you have just a few families together, you have a club. Am I right? Because if you come and I come with my seven, <laughs> you come with your four and she comes with her three. And before you know it, you have a ton of kids together. And so, um, okay, so people don't have access maybe to a church location to rent or they don't have a dot org organization. What kind of things can people do to, to organically pull clubs together? Maybe at a park, meet up groups. Have you done that before, before you were in this little more formal setting? Um, in the informal setting, it was pretty much the people in my co-op. Um, when I say co-op, well, not co-op, more like neighborhood. So um, there were several kids who like live in my cul-de-sac and just kind of having a little bit of a front yard story time, um, sitting with those children and getting to organically create friend groups with children being at the playground. It is, you have the, oh, and the public library. Let's not forget the public library. The public library, there are so many options, so many um, opportunities to meet other moms especially if you're just going in the middle of the day for a story time and you can communicate with them about the things that you would like to do together. Um, I find that many moms are receptive, um, you, but you have to put yourself out there. Let's be honest, homeschool moms, we can be as, we can be anti, more antisocial than our children at times. So it's an opportunity for you to push, push the envelope and, and communicate. Yes, yes. I know my kids do 4-H, um, you know, there's, you can do art. You know, I have a student who just mm -hmm. loves art. We bring together these art clubs. We do co-op as well, you know, so it can be on any subject, right? How about robotics? I know there's a lot of resources um, needed for robotics. Were you instantly a part of a big club or how did you get the interest to robotics to build up to where you guys are now? Well, it was very interesting. The robots, um, with our, which are, um, any, I think they're like um, these little robots, the club had already purchased them before and they didn't have anybody to continue the club. So they, I think they had like maybe a year or two with no, with no one doing the club. And then when I came in and said, well, I would love to do the club, they already had the resources in that way. I then um, at that time realized there were opportunities to judge other competitions. And see, ju volunteering to judge competitions that are around the club or the team gives you an opportunity to learn because you learn the rules, you learn the structure, and you could do that the season or the or before you actually start the club because you do want to see how much responsibility is entailed. So being a part of the volunteer force, that also gives you an opportunity to really judge the, um, the environment. Yes. When you're dealing with the adults who run it behind the scene, does it align with your values? Um, I always tell parents that when you are evaluating a club, you have to see if it has love. And love for me stands for location slash time. Because if you have, if I have to go to a location, it takes time. If it's far away and I need to assess my time. O for observation. Do they give you the opportunity to observe the club? Is there an opportunity for you to volunteer? Can you be a brand ambassador? Are they welcoming of a parent being there um, to be there with your child? V value. Things cost money. It's nothing worse than you you find the best club in the world and then your honey your husband goes, How much does that cost? And you're looking like, Oh, I forgot to talk to you about budget. And E is enthusiasm. Is your child excited about it? Because if your child's not excited about it, but you're you have these grand ideas of them being this engineer and they hate STEM. <laughs> <laughs> you have you have these grand ideas of your child, you know, becoming being a, a classical pianist and you realize they hate the piano. You you may want to you may want to take some time to to judge what's your child's enthusiasm level because nothing will kill an activity quicker than you dragging them somewhere. Yes. So I would say yes. check on love, love, location, ability to observe, the value and enthusiasm. Wow, that's great, Nicole. You're teaching us all. Tell me a little bit about your role as the ambassador for the HSLDA Compassion. Tell me the, how does that connect into your community? What exactly do you do? So um, it's been a wonderful opportunity. So the um, HSLDA Compassion, um, we have the opportunity to fundraise on behalf of the Compassion Fund for our state. And when parents um, are going through a difficult time, um, 
from everything from job loss to um, you know relocation because here in Georgia we are dealing with many um, families who are being displaced because of the housing market and they're renting um, or even death in a family God forbid variety of issues we're able to come alongside that family and and give them a grant um, to or scholarship um, to the HSLDA Academy to various um, curriculum providers and actual monies at times to be able to continue to homeschool. And so it's just been a wonderful opportunity. I, I really think when you're volunteering with something like that, it also makes you amazingly grateful for the blessings that you have and to be in a place because we all need to take moments to be God's hands and feet out here in this world. And that's, and, and volunteering is a very big part of that. Wow. You're doing such an amazing job. And I understand that you have a teen segment of the Flourish 2023 event coming up, which I'm not surprised after we've learned so much about you. Uh, I'm not surprised that not only would you do a conference to help the community, but you would also invite the teens along. Tell us what you're going to do with the teens. So we're very excited um, to have a teen portion. Many times when you go to homeschool conferences, they lay out a whole program for the um, for the elementary kids and things like that. But for our teens, we actually have surveyed our teens um, from various um, homeschool co-op groups and have found that they are dealing with some things um, post pandemic, including anxiety and um, and just really questioning some um, the world versus biblical views. And we really want them to be foundational Christians, not your mama's religion, not your daddy's religion, but you know Jesus for yourself. So on a team program, we have who's and who you are. And in this program, we're going to talk about what is your story? What does it say about you? What, is, what does your story say about you, your life? Are you the, who's the author of your story? In your story, are you a hero or are you a villain? How are you interacting and personally identifying with the world and presenting it? We also have a program called Free Indeed, where we're like, freedom can be dangerous, but we need to understand their responsibility that comes with our liberties. And when you are representing something bigger than yourself, what are the things that help you feel um, accountable in that space? The Beautifully Broken is another program where we're going to talk about these uh, anxiety, being stressed, and the overwhelmed feeling that some um, children are having as they struggle to try to navigate their feelings and even helping them to get some skills to self navigate, um, to self advocate for themselves. And last but not least, we do have a Can You Handle It? This is an executive functioning workshop where we're going to give some tools and some tips on how kids can help personally scheduled their lives. I mean, children are being taken over by emails and various learning platforms. They may have to adjust to how are they learning how to manage that in this post pandemic technology world. Wow. This sounds like a great event it's going to be. So we're very excited. So as we wrap up, I want to find out if anyone has questions. If you have questions for Nicole, this is the opportunity to reach this very busy lady um, about clubs, activities, just how you're pulling it all together. This is so very, very exciting. So while everyone takes a moment to ask any questions, I want to give you an opportunity to say, uh, thanks, because I understand you're at the DeKalb Conference Center, where it's going to be. Is that right? Yes, Currently? actually, okay. we had a, a huge volunteer meeting. Um, I cannot say enough thanks to my volunteers for showing up today. Um, and we're here at the DeKalb Conference Center in Clarkston, Georgia, um, right now. And we're just excited to be able to get ready to do this this conference. And um, and just have just seen really so many partnerships come in from various organizations. Number one, HSLDA, um, Vela Education Fund, um, Yes, Every Child Foundation. And, and just to see these people um, come in and really say, hey, whatever you need at this moment, we're going to help and we're going to support. Um, and I have so many parents who are just so excited and are, are seeking help. I mean, you're you're doing um, for us the four year high school plan. Um, that is the scariest thing to many homeschool um, families. They're like, oh, my God. So middle school and elementary school were a breeze. Now it's going to count. How am I going to get through high school? And so we have you um, to help facilitate that workshop. And we're excited. 
Yes, I'm excited about being there. And all of the, the things that we talked about today, we're going to just kind of continue the conversation. We know about our five core, English, math, science, history, foreign language. But what about these unique electives? I have a name for it. I call them unique electives <laughs> that you're talking about, Nicole, that goes on the transcript. And, you know, one of the funny things about a transcript is that you want to have you want it to show clues of where the child's interest, right? So an engineer child's transcript should look like a kid has been interested in engineering along their high school years. And a computer science, like you said, you have a son in computer science. I bet his transcript had evidence that this kid was interested in computer science. And art, I have a artist who's uh, in graphic design, but her transcript had a lot of evidence that she was interested in art. And then I have another kid who's uh, environmental science and another kid who's political science. And so no matter what it is, I think sometimes parents need um, some encouragement to even start as early as ninth grade to let those electives that you pick for your student be unique electives. And of course, Nicole, you've taught us enough. That love acronym is so powerful about how we can make them into clubs and uh, serve our community at the same time. This is so very exciting. So what are your closing thoughts? Somebody said they have, they have a question. Oh, there's a virtual portion is what someone is posting. There's a virtual portion of your conference. Did you want to talk about that? Yes, so we have a virtual portion um, of our conference. It's going to be hosted on the Whova app, W-H-O-V-A. And when you go to um, our website at georgiablackhomeeducators.org and you are able to view our agenda, our speakers, um, when you register for the conference, you will have access to our virtual ticket. It is only $15. You get two days worth of content. And once you get um, you register, you will get total access to the Whova app. Um, and all of those um, access um, will be sent out by Monday if there's anyone still seeking it. But um, just please go to our website, georgiablackhomeeducators.org. That's exciting. Also, so um, everyone's invited. Everyone's invited. Yeah. So whoever wants to come, you can either come virtually or you can come and join us live in Georgia. What else did you want to say, Nicole? Well, when you were talking about a closing thought, um, I, I want to make sure that we understand that when your children are um, being a part of clubs, it's about creating a whole experience. You have to think of yourself as curating almost like a museum exhibit um, in a way that you have all the parts there. So your child is totally, you're able to provide these things and your child is able to see what the world has to offer. Now, when you were talking about students and their niche interests, because I have a child who's into robotics, the, a very pivotal part of all of this is volunteerism. You have to help your child practice, as I say, being hands and feet of Jesus and having a heart for other people. Children just don't get to be adults and go, well, you know what? I think I'm going to go volunteer with this ministry if they never saw it exhibited. So my son, when he was in computer science um, um, doing his um, robotics, his robotics team would run workshops for the, this was a high school robotics team would run workshops for the elementary children. Um, they would also um, have tutoring to, for the elementary children in math and science. Um, he had opportunities where he volunteered to teach at a, um, a summer camp here at the firm, at the firm bank science center. And he also had the opportunity from a wonderful homeschool co-op, um, summon Academy who gave him the opportunity to have in his senior year to have his own programming class that he put together so that children, kids from the co-op could come to programming The it is important that you view the experiences also through the lens of volunteerism, because you are trying to equip them to be ready for the world. When they say iron sharp and iron in these, if in these opportunities, your child gets with um, being in extracurricular activities, you are the iron because they may have some disappointing times. They may have some times they need to discuss um, an issue or some worldly principle or something someone brought up to them. They need to have a safe space to come back to talk to you as the parent about what they're thinking. Yeah. So please, 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 volunteerism and, and, and helping your child to practice as, you know, being a part of the Great Commission to bring in disciples and to baptize because those things really do take practice. I love that. And I was just saying that to my teens, you know, we're on college break, right? And so 
my college students are back and they're serving in the same co-op and homeschool programs that they came out of. And that's the beauty of home education. You have individualized education, it's customized, and there are places for kids to volunteer and to help each other, even in a peer group setting. So we're not just mm -hmm. all sitting alone, alone we're, you know, worried about socialization. We really do have so many great opportunities for homeschool students. And boy, thank you, Nicole Doyle. You were awesome. We learned so much from you. We're so inspired. We're looking forward to being with you in Georgia. And um, people can even um, connect in, uh, virtually with you, which is great. So tell them as we close out one more time, how can they reach you? Where should they go? So um, if you want to reach us, you can reach me at the georgiablackhomeeducators.org. And that is for information about the conference. Um, also on that website, there um, are the separate um, buttons there for the collaborators of our conference, which is myself um, here at DeKalb Christian Home Educators, Andrea Hall at Epic Homeschool Network, and Michelle Shaw at NIPA. And the reason why I'm also making sure those ladies get a spot is because we are in different locations in Georgia. And so if you are looking for a um, for elementary and middle, we have some high school with us, there are different, um, all three of us offer different clubs, different opportunities. And so please reach out to us at, at georgiablackhomeeducators.org. Awesome. Thank you, Nicole Doyle. You were amazing. We appreciate you so much. Thank you, everybody, for watching. And you know what? We really, really, really appreciate all that you've shared. And if you want more, please continue to watch us. Follow us on uh, hslda.org. And we're here to support you, not only for lobbying presence, but attorneys, educational consultants, special needs, high school, uh, kindergarten to eighth grade. We're just here to help making homeschool possible. So thanks for watching today. Bye for now. Thank you, Nicole. Oh, thank you. It was great.